Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Physio. In this module, I want to show you the top three diagrams that are used in Visio. And I'm going to start off with a basic flowchart. So I'm clicking on the flowchart template there. I'm going for a blank one. You've got these preset ones you can start with, but I'm just going to create that one. And what you get once you do a basic flowchart, you have your stencils down the left hand side. And in this one, you've got more shapes at the top. This gives you access to lots of other things. Quick shapes, basic flow chart shapes, and then cross-functional flow chart shapes. But I'm just going to focus on this one. So you've got the start and end option. So I'm just going to drag that onto the screen. And then what you can do is you can use these tools to just bring in some of the more common shapes. So for example, there is a process. So I'll click on that. And you can come down, there's a decision, and then you can come out of that decision and have another process, and then come out of that and have an end or whatever, or you can manually get that to go back to the beginning and carry on coming down from this one. So process, process, and then end. So now I need to put a link into the top one because if this is a circle, that's a question. If it's a no, if I click on this, just double click and type no, that's the route for no. And this is the route for yes. So I'll just type yes on there, you carry on. What you can do, let me just make that a little bit bigger. What you can do is manually using this connector tool, click on that, come from this box here and go back up to the start or maybe back up to the first process, whatever that is. So it's gluing to the connection point and you can see how that works there. Now, if that line, you want that line to look slightly different, you can make it with dashes, so like that. You can also change um, the color of the thing so it stands out a bit more. So that's the route if they've made a mistake. So I'll just knock that off. Now, you can also um, have multiple pages. I've got page one here. I just need to click a plus like that and have page two. You can have all that sort of stuff and have a master sort of page and then sub pages going after it. It doesn't have to be all on one page. So that's um, a simple flow chart. And just so you know, you can just type in there, process A, you can just type in there. And each of these shapes has a feature called shape data. Now to see the shape data that's preloaded, you would need to go to the data tab if you've got professional or it's on the um, um, developer tab or view tab should I say if you haven't got a professional version but what you've got there is these windows shape data and these are the preset categories that come with the flowchart if you want to change that you can just right click on any shape and go down into um, shape data define shape data and then you are seeing this list and you can create a new one i'll just put one in there so you can see how it works currency and then format that how you want it it's on text but you've got option there to have that on currency and you can put a prompt in there and a default value whatever you want but I'll click ok to that that now sits at the bottom ready for you to fill in so this is like a database that sits in the back of these shapes You've also got, uh, I'll just do it on this one, but I won't bother doing it on, on all the other ones. You've got design features, and on the right hand side there, you've got some preset backgrounds. I'm just gonna pick the world up as a background. So that sits in a background page. So the background page is there. And this first page here that I've added hasn't got this background page attached to it, whereas the page one does. So page two, what you'd have to do, if you wanted that to come through, it's just basically right click on that, go into page setup and tell it to look at the background page that you just did, which is that one, and then it will come through onto this page as well. So on this background page, you put you could put all your logos on. You can create your own background page, you don't have to do this one. You've also got borders and titles, so just pick that one, and that sits on the background page as well. And then you can just type in there just my stuff. The date and times on there and then if I come back to page two that's coming through with the world on page one it's coming through as well and you can now see that that's causing a bit of problem with this diagram so I either go back to the 
this page and try and move it up a bit, which I can't. I can't actually move that any more than it already is. So then that means I will have to, on this page, do Control A, select all the shapes, just move them down a little bit, and like that, I've sorted that out. So that's just a very, very quick overview of a flow chart. That's one of the three main diagrams that's used in Visio. I think the next most common diagram that's used in Visio is the organizational chart. So I'm just going to go File, New, and I'm going to pick this one. And then again, I'm going to, it's got this wizard. It's going to start a wizard for me. I don't really want to do that. Um, I'm just going to pick one of these. So you can see how it's going to look. So I'll, I'll click on that one and click on Create. And it should just drop it in for me with the stencil shapes already there. Now I'm obviously going to need to close down this, this diagram. Get rid of that one. I'm not going to save it, so get rid of it. So this gives me the whole screen. Uh, I'll leave the shape data pane open so you can see that when you click on these, these also have shape data attached to them. So you can store database information if you want. So basically this whole thing is just giving you the idea of how it works. I'm just going to go Control A to select everything and press Delete just to get rid of that because I want to do it myself. And it's as simple as this. You drag on the shape and then you drag on the subshape. So that's the executive. And in there you've got some information. You can just double click on there. So it's got um, name. So I'll just go Saxton and then title. Mr. I think it's I think titles wanting an appointment really you've got this little mugshot area here for a picture if I right click on this you've got the option to insert a picture through that change picture um, I'll just click on that and grab a picture of myself and you can all have a good laugh at that okay that's a picture of me a few years ago so that's that one and you can do the same for everybody now you can individually bring in a manager. What you have to do is sit it on top of that one and it'll just snap out underneath. So I'll do that a couple of times. It just snaps into position and then you do it three times. But you can also use this multiple shapes feature, multiple shapes. So I'll do that for this one. I'll drop it onto this manager and this will be like, it's on position and I'm going to say four. Okay, that's going to drop four people in there. And then I might just manually have one for that guy and then I'll do two there. So you've got multiple shapes or whatever, but each time you just drop it onto the the sort of like management level, which is these pink ones. That's how you can do that. You've got these text frames, so you might want some shapes. If I just go um, get a manager of away from this, not actually linked in, lines it up, but then I can go uh, multiple shapes, drop that onto there. Just have three positions again coming out. Uh, these are not actually attached there, so I've got like this team frame that I could maybe utilize around that. Just make this a little bit bigger, like that. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to do Control A to move the whole drawing area back across a little bit onto this page, like so. All nice and neat. And then you've got the connector tool as well, where you might want to come from this this manager. It does actually report into this person, but he's not part of this structure. That's what that would be. Like so, okay, it's just telling me what to do there, about to drag it on top. Clicking back onto the pointer tool, so you can do that. Now, there is a feature in the organizational chart where you can synchronize shapes. So if I just right click on this guy, you've got um, create synchronized copy. So I'll click on that and it creates a new page. If you already had pages created, it would show you those pages. But for this ex example, I'll just go into a new page and then that drops out on there. Now what is synchronized is the data. What is not synchronized is you adding extra shapes. So you would do this at the end. So if I added another shape here, that would not appear on this list. However, if I change something in terms of data, like if I double click on that and call it Smith, for example, that is the bit that's synchronized. If I just click away from that and then go and show you on page two, you can see that that's now synchronized like so. So you can spread a synchronize set of copies across multiple pages and then you can also do this if i right click on this guy again you've got um the option if you want to collapse these front screens so i've got subordinates there arrange hide subordinates so i click on hide that's exactly what it does on the it says it does what it says on the tin it hides these 
So you could have this page just with a high level management and then each group, if you like, or each team can then show a opened up structure like that. And again, you've got, if I click on one of these shapes, you've got the option to do shape data, add your own, adjust that. So that's the organizational chart, very quick overview. There's a lot more you can do to that. I've got other videos which go into that in a bit more detail. You can bring data in from other programs like Excel and drop it in there. But I want to do the last one, the last one of this little set that I wanted to do, which is the scheduling one, and it is going to be a Gantt chart. So I'm clicking on that one, and I'm going to create a blank one, and then create. So this is more of a visual thing. Um, I'll have to close this one down again as well. So it's asking me how many tasks I want. I'll leave everything. I'll leave everything here default. So five tasks. Click OK. It creates the Gantt chart for me. There it is, so we've got task one, two, three. So you can have like I'll call that develop strat AG. And then you've got your subtasks underneath if you like. Um coord teams, train staff, and then market product. I'll just do sell product sell product so those are the tasks get it right sell product what you've got is these date options if you right click on any of these you can insert a column there's quite a lot of different um, bits and bobs you can insert these are all the columns that you can insert percentage complete i will put that there actually that's a good one to have so you've got your percentage complete and then you finish date, your duration. You can change the duration. If I change the duration on the one below to three days and so on, two days or three days again, two days. I'll leave that one on one day. And then you can actually um, link all these together. If I hold my shift key down and click on these like so, what you can do is just link these together so that they flow like a proper Gantt chart would. Now you can either right click or you can go onto the Gantt chart tab at the top there and then you've got link and then it will just link them like so you can see that if you do a percentage complete like if I go 34% which is a weird number to type you can see you get like the little completion bar appearing there and you can add as many columns as, as, as the view will allow you you can change the the timeline if you don't like the time the set that you set initially you can actually change that so you've got your working time, your chart options up there, brings you back to this and you can change it if you don't want that. That one is your working time, when you work or don't work. And that's basically all this is. It's not, although you have got, if I just right click, you have, in fact I'll right click on one of these tasks. This is a shape data. You've got quite a lot of information there that can be associated with these little tasks. It's like a mini project management tool, but it by no means is it anywhere near as good as Microsoft Project, a proper thing. I think this is useful for just presenting information, top level information. Um, you can actually indent all of these under these tasks as well. I'll just do that to show you. What you have to do is basically click on each task very carefully with your shift key and then make sure you actually don't miss one out. You haven't got a lot of space there. I haven't clicked on the top one and then on the on the ribbon the gantt chart part you've got indent there you create the indent and then that top one becomes um the overarching task for these so you can see that and it's also giving you the completion there if i change some of these completions to 100 percent say see that's automatically picking it up so it's quite useful like that but it's again i, I still think it's for low level stuff now there is something else that comes with this scheduling thing that's part of the scheduling thing it's like the the timeline that you've got which is like a very visual overview of a project so if i just go for that option if i go file new and this time i'm going to go down into categories because i haven't had it open recently so it won't be there but it, it sits in schedule there's a preview of it there look schedule and there's your timeline so i'll just click on that one and again i'm going for a blank one click and create and then that will allow me to just drag very quickly demonstrate the timeline so you've got different options there um, block cylindrical i'm just going to go for that one so like that and again it gives you the time frame i'm not going to change any of these i'll click ok 
and then you've got that but what I do like to have on this is if I right click on there you've got arrowhead at the end so that's that's quite useful because you can put this into PowerPoint and again if we go into the timeline tag there you've got the options to insert data from projects and or Excel and you can see how you can work this out now the shapes themselves are just really straightforward that's today put today on there and it'll just drop it in today and then you've got like a, an elapsed time indicator that you can utilize which is that it tells you how far down the project we're at depending on what the start date was when you went into your format and then you've got these different milestone markers or you've got squirly, uh, squiggly brackets I'll go for them just drop that on so that would be like a phase you've got a start date and an end date and then you can give it a, a description so I'll just call that phase one phase one like so you if you've got loads of information there you can grab that little yellow thing there and then that spins it the other way around you've got square milestones and different milestones all these things can be positioned or unrotated and should be named like so but very very quickly you can create a um, timeline with some major um, items on it not detail I don't think major items on it and you can see how it works you can see the shape data is, is minimal when you click on these things you've got obviously the information that you saw me type and you've got the percentage complete there the timeline itself hasn't got much shape data I click on that again so you can see it. it's got a bit there but you can just um, see little bits and bobs so that's um, a quick look at the timeline so you've looked at a basic flow chart very quickly organizational chart the, uh, the Gantt chart and then this little timeline so hopefully all of this has been of use there are more detailed videos on each of these on my playlist for Visio. feel free to have a look thank you for your time for this though catch you on the next one